we're gonna surround them. And we beat the shit out of them. Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt are finally back on the big screen together after being in two of the biggest movies last year, Barbenheimer. They're back in The Fall Guy. I'm going to review it right here, but make sure you leave a like. It helps a lot. I'm going to you guys a quick plot synopsis just so you know what the movie is about. After leaving the business one year ago, battle-scarred stuntman Colt Seaver springs back into action when the star of a big studio movie suddenly disappears. As the mystery surrounding the missing actor deepens, Colt soon finds himself ensnared in a sinister plot that pushes him to the edge of a fall more dangerous than any stunt. So this is the movie that kicks off the summer movie season. We all know it. We all love it. The start of May through basically the end of August. And I know a lot of people were nervous about this, including me personally, because it's pretty much the first year without a big, you know, movie, big Marvel movie opening up the summer, opening up the first week of May. Because I think Deadpool 3 was going to do it, but they had to do reshoots. Had to keep working on VFX, which I do love that they actually did delay that to July. It's going to be pretty fun, you know, middle, middle of July kind of summer movie event for that. So, you know, I was a little nervous about Fall Guy opening because it's probably not going to open as much as a big Marvel movie will. I think the, you know, opening is around $40 million right now. I think its budget is about one thirty. But man, you guys got to go see this. This is a great summer movie, a great summer blockbuster. I feel like everyone's going to really enjoy this movie. And I, I really did love this movie. It just had everything I really wanted in it. I love the trailers. I know a lot of people got annoyed with the trailers, but I really love the trailers. Because I'm a huge Ryan Gosling fan. You know, he's my favorite actor of all time. I'm a little biased because I love you know, almost every one of his movies. I've, I haven't seen all of them. I've only seen 18. I think he has like 20 something. Some of them are like short films and all that. But he doesn't miss that often. I swear to God. Like he has so many films in my top 20s, top 10. Like La La Land is terrific. One of my favorites. Uh, Blade Runner 2049 is easily better than the original. And it is like top four films of mine. And he has First Man, what a great performance by him in that. And then he has The Nice Guys, such, it's one of the greatest comedy movies of all time. So underrated, needs the sequel. Ryan Gosling even said, if we weren't going against Angry Birds, we have, made, we have would have made more money. That's on you guys. Why didn't you guys go see The Nice Guys? I wasn't old enough at that time to go see it, but I just love that movie. I think it's going to be a cult classic. You know, he has The Place Beyond the Pines, which I think is great. And he has Drive, you know, the, he's literally me movie. Ryan Gosling has so many of those and this one is no different he's literally me colt sievers is literally me in here we all love colt sievers you're gonna love colt sievers after this movie it, it's as i said it's a very fun movie very fun popcorn movie we'll get to all that but just go to this this is a movie that kicks off the summer it's gonna be great then next week you got kingdom of the planet of the apes such a great run in may already the end of may you're gonna have furiosa then you're gonna have garfield for the kids you know take the kids let the kids go to go go see garfield then do yourself a favor. Go see Furiosa. Go see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Go see The Fall Guy. Go see all of them, you know. And, you know, people will be saying movies are expensive. Uh, snacks are pretty expensive. Movie tickets, on the other hand, get a membership. Regal Unlimited, great deal. AMC, if you have it near you, great deal. I saved so much money with Regal Unlimited, and you don't have to buy the candy. Some people complain that candy prices, popcorn prices are insane. You don't have to buy it. No one's, no one's asking you to buy it. But, yeah. For Fall Guy, such a great movie to kick off the summer. I feel bad saying that it wasn't going to be, but wow, what a great movie. What a fun movie. I absolutely loved it. And The Fall Guy, it focuses on stunts. The stunts are probably the biggest part about this movie if you exclude like Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. So I wanted to shout out the stunt team. They do, you know, the stunt team has been doing videos and doing, doing you know, marketing for the movie, but you really do love their kind of highlighting them because they are a big part of this about this movie. Logan Holiday is one of the start members who is responsible for the new record for the most amount of canon rolls with the number being eight and a half that's awesome dude seeing that just you know seeing that in the promo promo promotional footage was awesome seeing all those cannon rolls i was like this is so sick you know he's probably you know not he's probably pretty good after that but it's probably gonna hurt just a little bit for him so i really do respect stunt performance there's a lot of you know horrible accidents that go on with stunt performance you know the biggest accident being you know with the harry potter guy his stunt performer got you know paralyzed from what he did you know they got to be careful but what they do in these movies is really something cool justin eaton he was responsible for most of the, most of the fighting in this movie and martial arts there's a lot of fighting here ben jenkins was responsible for the firework and the parkour it's a really funny sequence with the firework really love that and troy brown did the 150 foot you know high fall at the end of the movie which is in the trailer so i didn't really spoil it in the it's in the first first trailer that high fall, man, that is so scary, so sick. I'm not, you know, I wouldn't say I'm really scared of heights, but if you put me up somewhere like 100 feet, you ask me to jump and high fall, even, you know, strap in, I'll be like, eh, I don't know about that. And of course, Ryan Gosling, he did some of his own stunts here. You know, he didn't do all of his stunts, his stunt team's in here. 
and I really do like him for doing some of the stunts. He did this, I think that there's, there's the opening scene in the beginning. I think it is a one I don't remember there being cut, but it's a really cool one of a Ryan. Ryan does one of this, you know, big stunt where he's getting dropped like over a hundred feet. So cool that he actually did that because some, some actors wouldn't do that. You know, Tom Cruise would do that. He would do like all of his own stunts. It's crazy. But I really respect Ryan for doing his own stunt here. It's been said many times, it's been said by the cast of this movie, but we need a stunt Oscar. It's long overdue. How long is it going to take for the Academy to add a stunt Oscar? Like, it's crazy. I mean, last year we had so many great movies with a lot of great stunts. And, you know, the best being like Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Tom Cruise. He would have so many Oscars by now if they added a stunt Oscar or something like John Wick 4. Oh my God, John Wick 4. If they had a stunt Oscar last year, John Wick 4 would have won that. John Wick deserved it. Yeah, where are the stunt Oscars? There's so many great movies over the past, you know, years of filmmaking, over, you know, the whole decades of filmmaking. There's just so many stunts that go into making a movie, and they're not recognized here enough. I think the Academy should recognize them. Some people say Oscars don't matter. Well, I think they do matter because, you know, you know, movies that get awarded Oscars get a lot more attention. You know, they had poor things in Oppenheimer. A lot of people, you know, see they won Oscars on social media and they go check out those movies. And if, you know, stunt performance won for an Oscar, people go check them out. You know, check out their social media, check out what they do. Feel like they deserve some more recognition. That's why I wanted to, you know, highlight them in this review. Go check out, you know, the promotional videos for them. So it's cool to see them in this movie doing all that work. And, you know, the end credits of this movie, not really a spoiler, but they actually show the stuntman behind the scenes doing the stuff, show Ryan doing that big drop. It's really cool. Stay for the credits and, you know, watch that. Give them some uh, recognition for these awesome roles that they did. And David Leach directed this movie. He, and he was also previously a stunt performer and stunt coordinator, but he's now a director. Who, he's doing some really great movies. He has some great movies on his resume. He did numerous jobs as a second unit director before, you know, being a full director. His movies are, of course, Atomic Blonde, which I haven't seen yet, but I, I'm going to watch that. Uh, Deadpool 2, which I think is great. Might be better than the first Deadpool. It's a lot of fun. Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. You know, not a great movie, but I still have some fun with it. Bullet Train from 2022. I absolutely love that movie. I think that movie's a lot of fun. Then, of course, this one, The Fall Guy. I don't know if The Fall Guy is my favorite David Leach film. I might do a ranking of his films, so stay tuned for that on the channel. But he has some really great films and a lot of fun movies, I would say. He even has his own production company, which you have seen if you've seen some of his movies, 87 North. And as I said, it has a very fun sequence when it starts off the film. You know, when you see the production company, it's a very fun, like, you know, action sequence that they're showing the stunts and all that. So David Leach did a great job directing this. I cannot wait to go see what he does next. And you got some fun cameos in this movie. There's some fun ones. So if you don't get, go see this. Don't get them spoiled for yourself. And the soundtrack to this movie was perfect. I was bobbing my head up and down pretty much every time a new song came on because all they were doing was playing bangers. They didn't play any bad songs. It was all banger, banger, banger. And if you're a Taylor Swift fan, you already know one song's in the movie. So if you love Taylor Swift, you'll probably love the movie. And they also did something pretty cool with the score. They kind of mixed the score, some classic songs, some popular rock songs, which I found really innovative. And I really did love how much it added to the movie. And as I said, it's a fun movie and it is just fun. It's fun with the capital F, capital U, capital N. It's fun with all caps. And it's a movie about action. It's a movie about romance. It's practically a popcorn movie that has been missing from my life for years. We don't get movies like this often, but David Leach brings us all the fun in this one, all the fun in all of his movies. It's a movie about a movie, and who doesn't love that? It's also a super funny movie with David Leach and Ryan Gosling behind the movie, so why wouldn't it be funny? There's some great moments of poking fun at other movies, and there's a great joke about a Christopher Nolan movie that I'm not going to ruin for you, but I absolutely loved it and how much it kind of plays into the plot of the movie. It's also a straight up romance movie, as I said, because, you know, romantic comedies, you cast the right people for the roles, and because Ryan Gosling, you try to cast the right people, and Ryan Gosling, you know, he's proven himself with comedy, with the nice guys, and Barbie, such a great comedic actor, and proven himself with romance, with films like Crazy, Crazy Stupid Love and La La Land, and Emily Blunt also is fantastic in here, with some great moments, she looks fantastic here, I mean, she looks fantastic in every movie, but in here, she looks like 10 years younger, I swear to God, she would look great, she's also got some pretty great sarcastic moments in here, it might be early to say, but this is one of my favorite roles from her, of course, with Oppenheimer last year. She just seems really in her element, and I'd like to see her in more comedic movies. The romance and the tension is great between the two of them, and I think this, anyone but you and Challengers, 
really brought the romance and the steamy scenes back into back into full swing, which I'm really not mad at. I want more of it. It's lots of great action in this movie. It's a movie celebrating stunt people. So there's, of course, going to be a lot of action. And there is a lot. There's some great action scenes and great set pieces being used. But, you know, what helps this happen is probably David Leach. Because, as I said, he's a former stuntman and stunt coordinator. Let's get to our full cast. The Ryan Gosling is Colt Seavers, as I said. I already said this, but this man's the greatest actor of all time. Argue at the wall. The last two years, Ryan has had Barbie and now this. What a great run. And next up, he has a movie adaptation about the book Project Hail Mary. So hopefully that is loved by you know, that is loved by many, and hopefully it won't disappoint. Emily Blunt as Jody coming off Oppenheimer. She gives another great performance and shares some great chemistry with Ryan Gosling. And their press tour together was actually full of some great moments. Go watch some interviews with them. They had some great moments. We also had Aaron Taylor Johnson as Tom Ryder, basically the movie star in this that goes missing. Ryan Gosling's character has to go find him. I think that Aaron Taylor Johnson nailed this role because he plays kind of a stupid and cocky actor. They can't do much without a stuntman. Also, one of the best performances in the movie was Winston Duke as Dan. This man, Winston Duke, is getting more ripped for every single movie. I swear, he's huge in this movie and honestly does a good job at picking roles because I saw his IMDb and he's not really in too many bad movies. He has some pretty great movies on his resume and he gets to beat a lot of people up and gets to have fun with Ryan Gosling and I absolutely loved what he got to do here. Some people also said that this film drags and I think it might be a tiny bit too long. But honestly, I kind of disagree. It doesn't really drag. It maybe is like five, ten minutes too long. But I can't. I couldn't get enough of the dynamic duo of Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, the fun stunts, the funny, you know, action set pieces, the funny moments between the characters, the soundtrack. It was overall just a really enjoyable experience. So overall, the Fall Guy, I absolutely loved it. I love Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt together. Ryan Gosling. He doesn't disappoint, gives us another great movie, and I cannot wait to see him in Project Hail Mary. David Leach does such a great job directing, great job by the stunt team. I hope they get a stunt Oscar soon for the Academy. Get on that Academy, but the Fall Guy, I loved it. I think that everyone will love it if you go see it. There's a lot of enjoyable moments. It's the start of the summer. You know, I think a lot of people should go see this. I don't know if it's going to make a lot of money, but I think it deserves to. So the Fall Guy, I'm going to give it a strong 9 out of 10. I really loved it. I really had a great time, and I think a lot of other people will have a great time. So let me know down in the comments. Did you guys go see The Fall Guy? Leave your thoughts down below. If you did enjoy my review, though, make sure to leave a like. Helps a lot. It's free to do so, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.